Hi, it's Jamie with Jamie's Art Solo Cards. Thank you very much for joining me. I have a fun project planned for us today. I hope this video inspires you to create something of your own. If you would, hit the like button and share the video with your friends. That helps me to grow this channel and to continue to bring you new projects. If you haven't subscribed yet, would you please consider subscribing? And if you have, thank you very much. Well, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. It's Jamie with Jamie's Arts a la Carts. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have got a patriotic project for us today. I want to do a little twist on the 4th of July wreaths. I'm going to use these square frames that I got from the Dollar Tree. I've got a couple different signs. So, God bless America in red and blue. I have these signs that we started to use uh, on the other video. So, I've got these to choose from also. I want to do the poof method because uh, this is from Dollar Tree and it tends to rival quite a bit, right? So, that's one way to combat that. I'm going to use a lot of chenille stems. I did, I do have wire ties, so if I'm putting a, a larger, like maybe the sign, right up here to attach it, I might use that. But for the most part, I want to attach everything with these uh, red chenilles because it does the job and it adds color, right? So I like that. Uh, I've got this uh, deco mesh, and I've got enough for two, right? So I've got all these different little ribbons. All this is Dollar Tree, so I was, I'm happy. Isn't that cute? So that means, will I go with the red track, or maybe I'll do the blue to, to, to contrast it? I don't know. I'm, th I'm leaning towards red. Same one stars on this burlap. I like that. And then the other that says USA. So that's nice. I've got some of this red tubing. It tends to work as that centerpiece well, right? So uh, these will not be out in the open, open. Oh, I do have these. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these or not. I'll play that one by ear. They only had one blue one left. That's a pretty blue, isn't it? So, we'll see. We'll see if we use those. Alright, I'm going to begin by taking everything out of the wrapper. And uh, no cutting, which is a nice thing with the deco mesh, right? But um, I do want to go ahead and get everything taken apart. I like to do everything assembly line, right? It just goes faster for me. So I've cut all of our ribbon and I've dovetailed it. That's what that means. So I want to show you how to do that just in case you haven't got to see that yet. So I can take three, four pieces. Um, I've got six left to cut, so I'm going to take three. I'm going to make sure that my edges and my corners are lined up really well. It's not wired, so that's why I can cut so many at one time. I'm going to fold it over, and I'm going to cut a 45. Alright, last dovetail. There are those. We'll move all these to the side and put them in a little baggie. I've got an idea for those. All right, so we have all of ours. I want to do a poof method. 
So we will put these to the side because we'll use them after we get the bases created. So I need these pipe cleaners, trade spots with the ribbon, and then all these over to the side. These go on actually very last, last, last. Did end up with uh, just some uh, random links that I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll see what I'm going to do with that, if anything. So that goes over here. Let's get our forms. Let's get our wire, or our, not wire ties, but our chenille stems added. Already taken the tags off. Got a little black piece stuck up in there. Okay. I like to use these cross beams, but I need to go in between two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two, right? Go around two because that helps with stability. So I'm going to do something like this, get them even, and then just do a twist, right? So some will come in and some will go out. Right there is the second one. I'm gonna put these to the side. Get them out of the way. And again, we're gonna do the poof style. And we're gonna do like 11 inch poofs. And so I did 11 inch on this, 10 inches on all the ribbon that I cut and then I cut these at eight. So there would be like a little staggered kind of look there. That's the intention. So let's see. Oh, I think this is where I'm gonna use these. Just to secure the ends. So let's get this over and out of the way. to start on the inside and work our way out. So basically, I'm just going to get it in here. I'm going to give it a good twist. And I'm going to come over here and wire tie this on. I'm going to wait until um, I get around. So what I saw online, <laughs> and that's one thing I don't like about this, deckle mesh. Okay, so 
I'm going to put this over here so that I can see 11 inches, right? So right here, I want to go down to here, right? That way I don't have to count, I don't have to measure. I can just use my, my mat here as my measuring piece. So I'm going to go here, get all of our little pieces in there, and I'm going to put it super tight. So we're going to go around and around and around until it is as full as we want it to be. So just let that go down to the floor. Again, I'm going to put my wire, my chenille stem on my measurement on my board and then measure over. Just keep going around and around and around. The key is to line this up with my measurement. So my chenille, I'm putting on a four and then going to 15. So here, here, put it between the two and then just give it a, a good hard twist, right? A tight twist, I should say. Move it over because we're now at the next one. And I'm going to have plenty. I'm going to go around more than once. Put it on my four. Come over. Excuse me. And I'm, I'm kind of cinching it, so pinching it together right here. Or I put it on the pipe cleaner. I'm back where I started. I'll just keep doing that all the way around until I use up this whole roll. That will just add to the fullness. We're getting close to the end, so go ahead. I'm going to unroll it because sometimes it has staples and it does. So then there's the center core. Okay, so now my next chenille here, here. So then we're just going to tuck that tail to the back, and then we'll see where we're at at the end. I'm going to go ahead and start right here where I ended, and do all the way back to where I have where I start with two, and then jump to the outside. That way I can get the same amount of fullness everywhere on the wreath. So again, I'm going to just give it several inches, tuck it to the back. had to clean off the table. It was going to drive me bananas. So, all right, back to our creating this wreath. So I'm, again, working my way over to where I see two, and then going on the outside edge, which is right here. So we have one more. So we're going to put our chenille 
on the four. Oops. Over to 15. <laughs> this is three of the Dollar Tree deco mesh rolls. So using this poof method, look how full that is, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the red, start the red. So let's find our end. It loves to stick to itself, right? It's all tangled up on itself. So again, I'm going to put it to the back. I am going to do uh, a few on the outside. Oh, you know what? I'm going to start on the inside. And why am I going to start on the inside? Because I want to be able to uh, spread this red out a little bit. Actually, I want to do blue first. Right, and then the red on the top. I think that'll be pretty. So, this has a, a sparkly in it, which is nice. So again, we're gonna push it to the back. You may not end up using those wire ties. We'll see. All right, so now, I cut off all this loose stuff so it doesn't hang up on itself. I'm going to make this one a little shorter. All right. that end 
I'm going to pull it back behind everything and stick it to the back. I'll pull it down. There's that. There it is so far, y'all. Got a little crazy there, it looks like. All right, so poofy. All right, so then I have a red for each of them. I wanted the red to be on the top. I'm going to go ahead and take it off the roll because we're going to use the whole thing. Start on the inside again. Okay, I'm going to take this and weave it down and through where I can pull it and have it come to the back. Right. Hide it in the back. Alright. So now I'm going to spread them apart again. That way I can get the red, red and the blue to set on top. <laughs> I do my final fluffing when I'm on the door. These will actually go out into a porch area. That's decoration for that party and then we'll go on uh, a door and a porch. So I'm just fluffing, spreading those colors out. Okay. So there is one leaf. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my little stragglies. Alright, so now we want to look at our ribbon. And we know we've got ten for each one. So let's make ten little bundles. some fluffing. I'm going to loosen this up. I'm going to readjust, bring this back just a little bit so that that can fluff a little better. I think it looks good. Okay, let's start adding 
Let's see how this is gonna go. So I have it all on top of each other, right? Ladies. And then I'm gonna put these three things. I am gonna make the little twisted ends go opposite directions. And then I'm going to pinch. Right, something like that and I'm going to try to turn it different like 90 to what the ribbon is that's just going to be for another additional um, layer right so then let me just look and then we can spread these out oh why do I only have two oh. Look what I did, y'all. Great balls of fire. I only have two of the ribbons on there. I'm so excited. Oh, it's right there. I did I did the rest right. I just missed picking it up. I'm going to lay them on top of each other because then I'm going to spread them out once I get them twisted onto the wreath. I'm going to get them there and then I'm going to pinch them. Right? And what I was saying is like if it's going this way, I want it to be opposite of the wires. Like 90 degrees so that when I come in here and I twist it, then I can come. Let's just see what one's going to look like before we go doing all of them. We're going to make them go opposite directions so they'll look something like that. Kind of like that. So let's look at the sign. So. The sign will get lost. So let's see, what about this other sign?
kind of too small, right? So maybe I have to put something behind this. We gotta look at the door. We gotta look at it on the door. All right. A couple things. When I hung it on the door and then put my uh, sign on there, which originally starts like this, you couldn't read it, right? It got lost in all the colors. So, even when I'm not cricketing, cricket to the rescue, right? and just put, and it's a permanent vinyl, put it on the back. Also, uh, when I was just looking at it, seeing, you know, I went ahead and used the other two, filled it in, but then I decided I don't really like this red all over the place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come and I'm gonna tuck all the red. And there'll be a little piece of red, but not much. And I'll have to redo my bows. So keep that in mind. I'm glad I used red uh, so I could hide it easy. All right, and it does kind of blend in, but the, the curly cues just didn't give me that look I thought I was looking for. So I'm just going to go and tuck it right down behind it. I did to, to get the white on the back as I cut just a piece of Cricut vinyl and I did use permanent because it does it's going to be outside a little bit and so basically I want to I'm going to cut right on that line right there It will be sticky in the openings of the letters, but that's not going to really bother. I mean, that doesn't bother me that it is. It's more important from my perspective for it to be um, as weather resistant as possible. So basically, you just bend the corner down, get it going, right? Peel it apart. I do like Cricut because it has the lines. Not every vinyl company does that. So now I just want to cut it too wide. So we're going to trim it. Still super easy to do. I didn't take into account those holes. I'm just going to cut a smidge off. Just freehanding it. Doesn't really matter. Right. Let's see if we can see 
see anything. Nothing on the edges or in the holes. So now we can press it down. All right. Flip it back over and then voila. Reconnect our truck and then we build the other wreath. Basically, you're just going to bend it down. You do want to keep it kind of the same shape. You want to close it though so you don't have to worry about when you store it, it falls all apart and comes apart. So I am closing it a little tighter than what it came as. And just get in there and then bend it down. Or something like that. Right, jack chain. Alright, there's the centerpiece for the second wreath. Alright, let's build another wreath. Oh, we almost got to use our cricket. <laughs> well, there is our wreath. I'll do a picture of the other one as well. It will be on a white, uh, white background on the porch. But there we are. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like it, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, would you please consider subscribing? And well, until next time, happy crafting!